Fantastic. Welcome, welcome. So I'm just so curious, um, how did you go from clerking for Sandra Day O'Connor to realizing you wanted to write? Well, I, I, one of the, my favorite things about myself is I'm kind of subject to epiphany and, um, and throughout my life, I will get intensely interested in subjects and do a lot of research and writing. And when I was clerking for Justice O'Connor, I was going for a walk on the Capitol ground on my lunch hour. And one day I have, I looked up at the Capitol dome and I asked myself sort of a rhetorical question, which was, what am I interested in that everybody else in the world is interested in? And I thought, well, power, money, fame, sex. And I was like, power, money, fame, sex. And to me, this was like one big idea. And I just raced off to the library and started researching and taking notes. And um, and, and this was familiar to me because this, this had happened to me ever since I was uh, little. Um, but this just got bigger and bigger. And I was working on it all the time and all my on the weekends after work. And then finally, it occurred to me, this is the kind of thing somebody would do if they were going to write a book. And then I thought, maybe I could be the one to write that book. And so I went to the bookstore and got a book called something like how to write and sell your nonfiction book proposal. Oh my and God. I followed the directions. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. But so what is this thing you're referring to that you had even in childhood? Just, I will get it really, really interested in something. Like I remember when I was really little, I was really interested in the Salem witch trials and I have like little notebooks. That's like my like 10 year old handwriting, writing down timelines and like, this is just, I'll get interested in something and then I'll just take notes on it. Like I went through this period a couple of years ago, where I was like, it's so interested in color. Yeah. I just couldn't stop reading and thinking about color as a subject. And I wrote this, I wrote this little thing. I mean, speaking of creativity, I wrote this thing. I really worked on it. It's edited. It has end notes. It's the whole thing. And every time I, I've shown it to some people and they're like, well, you really had fun with that, didn't you? You know, mm -hmm. like they're not into it the way I am. Um, but I just sort of, I couldn't help myself. So this is, so, so this was the first time though, that an idea was like, it actually turned into a book that did turn into my first book called Power, Money, Fame, Sex, A User's Guide. That was my first book. Wow. Um, and so now, but so now that's, that's my process is I'll get intensely interested in something, do tremendous amounts of note-taking and thinking about it. And then that's my book project. Amazing. So as the happiness goddess, tell us about the four tendencies. Okay, this now, and if you're watching and you've ever struggled to have the a habit of writing or the habit of exercising or going to sleep on time or anything, this is a personality framework that I discovered when I was writing my book Better Than Before, which is about habit formation. And it's really useful. Uh, it's, it's useful in many ways, but it's very helpful with habits um, because it shows you how to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. So, in a, it, and you can take the quiz if you want to know what you are. It's GretchenRubin.com slash quiz. It's free. At like three and a half million people have taken the quiz. There's a whole book, The Four Tendencies. But I'll describe it briefly, and probably everybody will know their tendency. You'll know the people in your life. We could do the Game of Thrones characters. We could do the office. These are very easy to spot once you know. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in brief, what it looks at is how you respond to expectations. Outer expectations, like a work day, deadline, and inner expectations, like your own desire to write a short story. So depending on whether you meet or resist outer and inner expectations, that makes you an upholder, a questioner, an obliger, or a rebel. So wow. upholders readily meet outer and inner expectations. They meet the work deadline. They keep the New Year's resolution without much fuss. Like they, they, their motto is discipline is my freedom. Questioners question all expectations. They'll do something if they think it makes sense. They resist anything arbitrary, unjustified. They love customization and research. Uh, their motto is I'll comply if you convince me why. The obliger is the biggest tendency for both men and women. Um, obligers readily meet outer expectations, but they struggle to meet inner expectations. So these are people who say, why is it that I always keep my promises to other people, but I have trouble keeping my promises to myself? Spoiler alert, the solution for obligers is outer accountability, even to meet an inner expectation. If you want to read more, join a book group. If you want to exercise more, take a class, work out with a friend who's annoyed if you don't show up, think of your duty to be a role model. There's a million ways to create outer accountability once you realize that that is what you need. And their motto is, you can count on me and I'm counting on you to count on me. And then finally, rebels. Rebels resist all expectations, outer and inner alike. They wanna do what they wanna do in their own way. 
they can do anything they want to do, anything they choose to do. But if you ask or tell them to do something, they're very likely to resist. And typically they don't tell themselves what to do. Like they don't sign up for a 10 a.m. writing class on Saturday because they think, I don't know what I want to do on Saturday. And just the idea that you're expecting me to show up is going to annoy me. Mm -hmm. um, so their motto is, you can't make me and neither can I. So once you know your tendency, you can figure out what might be interrupting your, your habit formation. Interesting. And so can you change? No, I, I, you know, in my observation, I'm a big believer in the genetic roots of personality. I think you bring this into the world with you, but, and, and there's really no reason to change. It's not that one is better or worse. It's really like, once you know your tendency, you can set yourself up to achieve your aims for yourself. So there's really no need, need to change. It's like, if you're an obliger, join a writing group where every day you check in with each other or you know you 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 uh you do it as a role model for someone else like when you're doing your work i'm going to do my work and if i'm not doing my work you don't have to do your work um whereas if you're um a rebel it much might be more like you you lean into your identity i'm a creative person i'm a poet i'm an artist i'm a person who takes time for myself um that's what works better for rebels. If you're an upholder like me, it's just like, put it on the calendar, then it gets done. If you're a questioner, it's like, why are you doing this? Think about, have you customized it to yourself? Have you really thought about why this is the way to go to meet your aims for yourself? Um, so there's there's really no, there's no better or worse. There's no reason to try to tr to change. It's just, how do you harness the strengths and and offset the limitations of your tendency? So how does one achieve happiness? Well, <laughs> there is no magic one size fits all solution um, because we're all different. We all have different values, interests, uh, temptations, uh, uh, natures. So we each have to figure that out for ourselves. If you were going to say, what is the secret to happiness? Okay. I'd say you could answer that in two ways. One way is relationships. To be happy, we have to have strong, enduring bonds. This is something that contemporary scientists and ancient philosophers agree on. In the end, we're social creatures. In the end, we need to feel like we belong. We need to be able to give and get support. We need to feel like we can confide. We need those. So any anytime you're thinking about how to spend your, your precious time, energy, or money, something that deepens your relationships or broadens your relationships is gonna is likely to make you happier. Or you could say that the secret to self to, to happiness is self-knowledge because you really do have to think about, well, what is true for me? I can't, you know, download a one page PDF with the seven bullet points of like, get up early, make your bed, you know, because it's, we're all different. Each of us has to figure it out for ourselves. Are you a morning person or a night person? Are you a finisher or an opener? Are you an abundance lover or simplicity lover? Are you an abstainer or a moderator? Are you, um, you know, there's, there's so many, uh, are you a marathoner or a sprinter or a procrastinator? Are you an upholder, questioner, obliger, rebel? When we know ourselves, we can set ourselves up to achieve our aims for ourselves and, and make ourselves happier, healthier, more productive, and more creative. Fantastic. Well, I, I love how, how articulate you are. And obviously, you've thought about this a lot. But <laughs> point, in, in thinking about the four tendencies, I can identify with every one of them, you oh, know, not well, at all you, times. But I, I think that that's I, a sign that you're a questioner. Because questioners think, well, if it makes sense to follow through with something, I'll just do it like an upholder. But if it doesn't make sense, I won't do it like a rebel. And I'm like, yeah, because you're thinking, why would I do it? Mm. And that's questioner. Mm. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Upholders don't think that way. Rebels don't think that way. Obligers, obligers are like, why is it that I never can take time for myself, but I can take time for other people? But upholders don't. Don't don't think about that. You know what I mean? It's like we all kind of think everybody sees the way that the world that we do. Yeah. But they don't. That's absolutely true. So what do you want people to know? What beautiful gift, I mean, runs through not just your books, but the person you are? Why are you here? What do you want to give to the world? I would really just say, think about yourself and what is true for you, because over and over, I've been so struck by how distracted we get by the way we wish we were or the way we expect that we are or the way other people want us to be. And we really lose sight of what is true for us. And I think that in the end, um, 
when we know ourselves, we can we can really have that foundation for a happier life because we know what is true for us, what makes us happier, uh, what might be pulling us down in terms of our happiness. Mm. So what's next? What's your next book? Oh, I'm working on a delightful book called Secrets of Adulthood. It's going to be a little book. Um, sometimes I write a big book and then sometimes I write a little book. Um, and uh, this is, uh, I, I love the form of the aphorism, the, that literary form. And it's a great creative exercise uh, is to really challenge yourself. If there's like a big idea that you're thinking of, can you really say it in one sentence or, mm -hmm. or two sentences? I've always been really attracted to that. I have a giant document where I collect other people's aphorisms, mm -hmm. uh, my favorites. Um, and so I challenged myself to write my own. And so this is a collection of my favorite aphorisms and it's coming out in the spring called Secrets of Adulthood. Wow. And do you have books? I mean, since you're describing your type so accurately, do you have books planned after that? I think I'm going to do a big project about uh, the empty nest phase of life, which I am reframing as the open door. That's my new yeah. way of ca categorizing because my daughter's going away. My younger daughter's going away to college in the fall. And I'm, you know, I, I'm very interested in using either the calendar or like life stages as catalysts for reflection, because I think in the tumult of everyday life, a lot of times we don't step back and say, well, and this is why the narrative method is so effective because it, it's a, it's a reminder, step back, stop, think, reflect. Um, and, and so I think sometimes, uh, sometimes it's our birthday, sometimes it's January 1st, sometimes it's like a health scare, maybe it's an important anniversary or milestone. And for me, I think this, this is just a big milestone. And so I want to step back and think, well, okay, now there's my time, the way I use my time is changing, the way I use my calendar is changing. How do I want to think about what's, what I want from the future? Um, and so I'm really excited about, I'm just starting to explore that um and that's that's a really if there, there's so much there i love talking to people about how they're um thinking about it i love dividing like i love finding categories i've already found some categories um that are fun to think about so that's that's yeah, that's what's well, those, next those, those life transitions which are so often excruciating when you're going through them because essentially you know, you're throwing your whole life and all the ideas that you've operated on in this era you don't really know how it's going to fall. Yeah. But I think the more times you go through transformations, the more it strengthens you. So I'm just curious, was there a, a particular transition for you that was particularly challenging? Switching from law to writing was, was a challenge um, because, you know, look, in truth, like I was the editor in chief of the law journal. I was a clerk for the Supreme Court. Like, I had every feather in my cap that a person would need in law. And with writing, I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't have, I wasn't on the school, the college newspaper. Uh, I, I didn't have a short story published. I didn't have clips. I, I didn't have a portfolio. I was starting from nothing. And that was a challenge um, because I went from a very clear path and a class and a path where I was very well established, you know, given given my age, which I was young yeah. and starting out, but I was very, you know, on that path in a solid way to something where I'm like, I knew nobody. I remember when a big thing for mine was for like a big aim of mine was like, I want to meet other writers. I didn't know any other writers. I didn't wow. I didn't know how publishing worked. I didn't know how how agents operated. I mean, and this was a long time ago. So there wasn't the internet where now you can look a lot of stuff up and kind of educate yourself. And so I just, like I said, I bought this one book and just followed the directions because that's all I knew. I mean, I had one friend who was an assistant at a literary agency and she was like the one person I knew that knew anything. <laughs> um, it's still one of my really good friends. Um, but, uh, so that was a, that was a big transition, but what really helped me, what I feel like made it much easier for me than it is often for other people. I feel very fortunate is I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Not even that I wanted to be a writer, yeah. but I wanted to write this book. I yeah, think yeah. sometimes we want to leave something, but we don't know where we want to go. And for me, it was more like, it wasn't even like so much that I wanted to leave where I was, but I'm like, oh my, it was like, I always think of, you know, in star Wars where the Millennium Falcon is in the tractor beam and the Death Star is pulling it in. And they're like, we we have to turn off the engines. We have to allow ourselves to go toward this Death Star because otherwise we'll be pulled apart. And I'm like, I felt this, in, this pull to it 
Wow. Uh, I'm like, I have to, I'd rather fail as a writer than succeed as a lawyer. I ha this is the time I will take my shot with this project. It'll either succeed or fail. And then I'll figure out what I do next. So that wow. made it easier because I, I had that clarity at that moment of transition. The clarity, the confidence and the vision. Wow. And the talent, whether or not you knew it then. Well, yeah, I was like, we'll see. <laughs> Well, uh, we could go on, but um, we're going to have to end for now. And I just can't thank you enough for sharing your ideas and yourself with us. Um, I hope you'll come back sometime and just really thanking you so much on behalf of everyone. Well, thank you, everybody. I so enjoyed uh, being able to participate today. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much.